Thank you very much for this. So welcome to the first session for today, this morning, after an exciting keynote with uh, interesting news and a lot of uh, thinking about science fiction. Uh, yeah, and I have to admit, I had a customer where I had to go four st stores down yeah, into the earth because of security, and it was not government, so whatever it is, yeah. It happens. However, we are not so much talking about science fiction or the fiction size. We want to talk today about the science side of the house a little bit. Uh, the topic of this talk, of course, is keeping pace with high performance computing. And that is somewhat interesting work to play, yeah, because HPC is about getting high performance, right, and keeping pace with high performance how to match that. So we will talk about this in the next hour. Uh, my name is Kai Dubke. I'm a product manager. I'm responsible for HPC at SUSE together with high availability and real time. With me, I have Eckbert Eich. He will help me later with the technical uh, part of it. And he's a project manager for HPC, helping me to make the stuff we are doing around HPC to happen in practice. So as I said, we are not so much on the fiction side, um, but more working on, on the science side and making it really real life stuff. Then. All right, let's look into the session today. We want to give some spotlight into the challenges we see in the market, uh, the market evolution where we are today. Uh, talk about community. And we have heard this in the morning in the keynote, right? that it is an issue if everyone running HPC is again and again and again doing the same thing, uh, means recompiling, optimizing stuff or so, instead of having a community, right? Uh, and I really wonder a little bit about this in, in some ways, because science at all is about community, worldwide community, and usually you share what you get and make it available. Um, and Hopefully, we can make this a little bit better in the future. Of course, then we will give you a technical update where we are at the moment with SUSE uh, HPC. And finally, then, to kick a step further, what we expect at SUSE yeah, for the near or long-term future. And finally, uh, after this, we have a Q&A session. Or we are available, Eckbert and, and I as well, yeah, to get your questions and give you some answers on that. Just a side note, uh, as said, I'm product manager. So my role usually is to bridge between the business suited guys and the long hair guys, right? So uh, whatever the technical people or the business people then, then are. Uh, my request to you, pretty easy. If you feel we could do something better, we miss something, we miss an opportunity, of course, yeah? So because finally it's about business. Uh, please tell me, OK? I don't have a pixie at hand. So that means if something is missing today, I can't make it happen tomorrow, right? That's by the nature of we are talking science and not fiction, yeah? But I need your input to make sure we can move forward and keeping pace. OK, when we look into the challenges we are facing, and we at SUSE have to answer, then in the HPC market, we face two different areas. And that is somewhat different than what we see in the data center area, where it's already merged, which, of course, in the future will merge also in HPC. And that is on the one side, we have customer challenges. And later, I will come to the market challenges, where I think we have more to overcome than with the customers. First of all, it is about performance. We are talking HPC. And it is about performance to deliver, even with tight budgets. And that is not just on, on, on money you have to do something, but also on personal resources, on human resources, yeah, to get something running. And if you think about uh, running big systems, you have to manage them. Yeah? And uh, we, we heard about X, road to exascale, right? Every, everyone knowing about exascale? I think so, right? Have you ever 
did the math about a Big Ten site today and then calculate what it would be to scale up to exascale. The interesting thing is if you do this, you end with something like 400,000, 500,000, might be 600,000 nodes. That is a huge amount of nodes, right? Uh, if you look into exascale, do you believe you get the additional 10, 50 times of engineers to make it happen? I don't believe so. So the expectation is with a team you have today, oh, to the cluster you already have today might be, you just could do exascale aside. I know that's somewhat black and white, but that is uh, some tools in it, I believe. So you have to bring this together, bringing the high performance, manage the system yeah, with a budget you have, and it doesn't help you there's budget for the silicon, yeah, because you don't get this move to, pe to people budget and make it sharper. Right? And all of this has to be in a way that it can serve mission, business, data critical applications. Right? We are doing great stuff with these uh, HPC servers, even with the non-high secure, we heard about this eight stores de death in the, in the desert or so, yeah. Uh, you need to make sure that all of this is not tempered, that the data is accurate, and no one hacks the system and something like that, right? That would be very bad about it. Uh, and at the same time, you have to have this running in many systems with scientific people in mind. Yeah, and this is interesting Ling, for me that a lot of scientific people don't care so much about security. Okay, but might be the opposite because I did a lot of security in the past, so for me it's natural to talk about security first instead of science, yeah? All oh, right, so I, I got someone second on this just for the record, okay? <laughs> so, and finally, and of course that is a SUSE topic on its own, yeah, because that is what we provide to our customers by providing subscriptions. That is about support, making sure that what you have is well done, is running, is working out of the box, and in case something happens. Yeah, we know it's software, we know human people do it, yeah, so every then and now something might happen. Yeah? So we give you support on this, we help you to make sure that it works. And that is a challenge for customers yeah, to make sure that this complete stack, yeah, this so of modules of pieces you have to bring together is really working. And that ties pretty nice to the keynote again, yeah, where Fiegen talked about uh, uh, the HPC orchestrator where a bundled stack is available or will be available, to say it this way, uh, to make sure uh, you get support on it in an enterprise level, an enterprise way. Okay, on the other side, we have market challenges. And with the market challenges, the first thing we see is that HPC market is really developing. You could argue, yeah, in the regular data center market, it's also developing. We see newer boxes, more speed, something like that. But we see really pieces moving in the area of HPC, which is a big changes. Uh, I could imagine of some merges in the near future or so where the market at all will change on this. And it's important yeah, to keep pace of this and make sure you don't miss a right point to, to make your own move. Unfortunately, we don't have a unified single stack for HPC. That means if you want to run HPC, you can't say, okay, move from company A to company B and both run the same stack. That doesn't work. There are some similarities in it because of the nature of HPC, but it isn't the same. Of course, we, we heard about the open HPC uh, community stuff. I will talk about this later because that is to overcome this and ease it, make it easier for people to use HPC. Due to the not available unified stack, we don't have so many standard generic applications available, right? So most of a, our HPC customer run their own software. So they do it on their own, yeah, that is okay, that is for scientific stuff, 
pretty much what you have to do because there is no generic application available. But if we talk about a market where uh, commercial customers want to take advantage of this great technology, they don't can do it because uh, uh, ISVs, the software vendors, don't provide stuff you just can run on something. So today, you can just get a database application and run it on a standard box with Susan's Enterprise Server. That's because it's a standard stack, it's standard Linux stuff, yeah? If you think about the same with HPC, that's not available today for many, many applications. I know there are applications available, but not enough, I would have to say, for making it a successful market. If you create an HPC cluster, then you are used to jungle with many, many projects and vendors. And with many, I mean not five or 10, it could be 50 or 100 different projects you have to bring together. That is a real uh, issue for getting it together, heard it, yeah, make sure it's working well. Uh, in support cases, you know it's not easy to make this wo really working well and so on. And interestingly, it, it's not just about the software stack. Even the hardware stack yeah, has often many different vendors in because you need specific selected devices also make it working. And finally, it is a specific challenge uh, which sometimes I like, sometimes I don't like. We have a total split in the market between the non-commercial university area, research, traditional research, and on the other side, the commercial area where customers use it to, to make money based on, on HPC technology. Come to this in a bit. And finally, the split is also tied to how HPC market developed, right? It started completely in research, and we have seen many commercial uh, customers adopting HPC technology, and my prediction is that in the future, a lot of these technology we see today special for HPC, yeah, will be standard in a traditional data center for, for whatever, database web or so, yeah? Uh, we have good examples for this, yeah? Think about InfiniBand, a traditional technology, yeah, uh, more or less created for HPC. It's not, uh, it's something which people use in a data center, yeah, to speed up database synchronization or something like that, yeah? And uh, we have seen it today, yeah, with, with, a, with a mobile, yeah, uh, where you have today the resources of a supercomputer in the past, yeah? And that is something we will see as well, yeah? Simply that on every single laptop, desktop, yeah, you will have more resources than we could imagine today, which has some needs, for example, for uh, uh, transmission speed, yeah, Wi-Fi and whatever, because it's simply not fast enough what we have outside of the box. The box itself is fast, but the connection is not. What we see in this market, as said, is we still have the traditional scientific people, researchers, but we add more and more commercial customers to it, which is a great story, of course, because it grows the overall HPC market, yeah? And that way, the researchers have a chance to get more budget because government sees there's more value in it to, to support something, besides having the number one of the planet or so, which might be an interesting uh, part to drive it as well. And that also is uh, backed up by some data by the analysts. Uh, of course, I don't want to go into the details here. You get the slides or just download the slides. If you have any questions on this, please just contact me uh, to, to talk about it. Let's talk a bit about what HPC means in real life. And these slides I really like. and. Uh, I have, uh, Eckbert has to, to keep track that I don't uh, take too much time for this, because every one of you is connected to HPC, and you know for your area how you affect real life, right? But sometimes it's fancy how it is connected to some areas to make it happen. And let me start with, with this overview slide. Uh, we at SUSE are proud of being part of this for a long time, right? because of technology stuff we have done on scale up, for example, yeah? 
we have done a lot in the 64-bit area, which is a standard today, right? And something like that. So we are proud of providing leading edge new technology and have a cool engineering team to work on all of this. And due to this, we have a huge load of customers, partners we are working with to make sure this is something we can bring to our customers or opposite you can get in an easy way to make sure it's working. So just to give you some examples, yeah, and solar activity. You might say, oh, that's astronomy, it doesn't matter on Earth, yeah? But finally, who has a mobile? Oh, okay, so if the solar activity is too crazy, then we might face issues with something like GPS, yeah? Some airplanes might, have, might need to have different routes or something like that, uh, which I don't like. I fly a lot, yeah, and I don't like to, to be having such issues or so. so Keeping track of these and doing analysis on this really affects our daily life. Example is a, the NASA Ames research. They run through the Linux Enterprise Server. And all of this, of course, what, what's now on, the next, on this slide and the next slide is about uh, scenarios where through Linux Enterprise Server and our HPC solution is used for. Seismic activity. Yeah, we know it happens, and I know there is an earthquake or so. You might have uh, heard about Italy, where they had, what have I learned, uh, 10,000 earthquakes in a row during five to 10 days. Okay, um, you heard about the bigs, right, where the buildings get down, but they had a lot of these mini thingies happen where it's just vibrant to say it this way on, on, on Earth, yeah. And at SuperMOOC uh, system in, in Germany, they do analysis on uh, stuff like volcanoes or so, on earthquakes, to simulate what happens to the geography or so in case an accident happens. So that is pretty important for the first re responders and something like that. So you know by, by measurement, okay, there was an earthquake, but now you have to wait. What does it mean? But if you know details, what is the simulation? What does it mean, earthquake at that area, that point uh, on Earth, yeah? For example, what moves it, yeah, on Earth? 10 centimeter, half a meter, or whatever. You then know more about what you might face in the next morning, something like that. Uh, an outcome of this, and close to this, is also research on tsunamis, right? Where we have these great warning systems uh, on the world, yeah? Where Something is measured, like an earthquake, yeah, on, or, uh, on, on sea level, yeah, and then they warn the people that they have to get, get away from, from the beach, yeah, and that saves lives, yeah. It might be for me, I'm living in the center of Germany, the chance for a tsunami is not that big, yeah, for, but for others on the world, that is, a, that is really a threat, yeah. Something for our, all of our life, yeah, oil and gas that drives us, yeah, I have to say, yeah. And we have a nice um, customer running that is a total uh, oil and gas company. And what they do is they research on, on uh, the, the oil and gas uh, where we have the remaining gas and, and find new spots and something like that. Uh, just in case if you're interested in, in something like that, they also have a pretty nice video about it, yeah. I could give you the link for this or just search it up on, on, on YouTube, yeah, uh, like Suze Total uh, uh, Oil and Gas, and then you find this. And that really helps us, yeah, to, to get us driving, right? I know in the US you do a lot uh, uh, with, with uh, this oil sand and something like that, uh, but many people don't like it, yeah, like fracking and all of this, yeah. So uh, I think it's much better as long as we need oil and gas, yeah, just to get a clean, uh, pump out of the ground. Yeah, I know it's never that clean, but uh, I believe it's better than, than, than some other stuff we do. Yeah, and something <coughs> at the end, which is really personal for every one of us, HPC does research to give us better medicine, to help us with diseases and something like that. Yeah, and I think that is something what I personally like really much because you never know what might happen to, to you in, in the near future, and have a need for a doctor or so, you would like to get the, the right sweatment, yeah? And we have heard about this morning in the keynote about uh, stuff using HPC and big data, about CTs, yeah, scanning 
to make sure that you get a wide proposal because of uh, getting a better analysis of data uh, than a single doctor might do who not see something like this every day, right? So it's just helping us for a better life. All right. All of this, of course, what we do is part of an ecosystem, of a broader system where you are part of it, Susie is part of it, and we have, of course, a couple of partners to make it happen. If you look at this, we have five boxes, you could say, uh, where we look at, at SUSE and work every day to improve each of these boxes yeah, to make sure you get every day a better solution. Yeah. On the left side, you see two boxes. That is what we give to you and what the easiest access usually is for, for you. First of all, we give you an enterprise class foundation where many HPC systems are built upon. That is a SUSE Linux enterprise server that is well known for stability, security, reliability, and all the stuff. And that's important for an HPC system, right? So, of course, if you do research on global warming, it might not be that uh, a problem if a result is not available today, but tomorrow, right? Because you think in a bigger timeline. But if you want, for example, the weather forecast for CNN, and you have to call them Oh, the next forecast, I'm sorry, will not, you will not get in 24 hours, but 36 hours. That doesn't do you any good, right? I believe that CNN has some crucial SLAs on these delivery, and it really will get you out of business if you can't deliver them their cool weather forecast or so, right? And both is research in some way, right? It's, it's not so much different systems to one. We help you with our SUSE Linux enterprise server to give you the foundation to make sure your system is stable and provides the resources when you need it. Our HPC partners, that is someone like an SGI, like Quay, but many others as well, yeah, they use this to build on top turnkey ready solution you can order from a small system, yeah, like something with just 20 nodes or so, yeah, which is for some companies already a nice HPC cluster, up to 50,000 nodes, like the top 10 clusters of the world. Yeah? And that is something you always need someone who brings all of this together, and that is cool that we have these partners working with. In the middle of it, then, you have the HPC module. The HPC module is something new. We will talk about this later in more details. But the base idea of the HPC module is to give you something as part of our SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, but in a dedicated way so we are able to give you more flexibility, to give you more tools focused on HPC than on the data center side of the house, right? Of course, I said it before, we see technology from HPC, leading edge technology, merging to the data center over time, right? There's some migration, yeah? And that, I believe, we will see also in the future, yeah? Just because it's new and used in HPC doesn't mean it has no need for the, for the data center. They just have to figure this out. And then on the right side, we have two boxes, which are, you could both count on partnering, but I split it up. Uh, first of all, we partner, right? So it's HPC is too much that SUSE just could do it all, right? So we partner. We partner with the science community, yeah? We partner with OpenHPC. We'll come to this in a bit, yeah? Uh, we will work, or we already work with ARM to make sure we get stuff. You have heard the announcements about ARM, and uh, I have to admit, the Raspberry Pi, I would not call an HPC system. You laugh. I just wait for the WAC version of it. Yeah, so <laughs> think about it, getting uh, one U rack, how many Raspberry Pis could you get in one U? So that gives you some decent resources already, yeah? So just a cool thing, more for the geeks, of course, to make it happen. Um, but we also have Microsoft on board, yeah? I have a slide on this, and you might wonder how Microsoft touched into uh, this and is connected to HPC and Linux. 
And then we have the Intel HPC orchestrator. I don't want to go into too much details. Fiegen did something in, a, in the keynote. We have big sessions and big topics on this next week on supercomputing, where I believe some of you I will see again. Um, and there's a session tomorrow by the Intel people on the HPC orchestrator. Okay, so if we look into this open HPC, I already started at the beginning that one of the big market challenges we have is so many different stacks, yeah, so many components that it's uneasy to make it, make it easy to deploy. Right? With open HPC, there is a way to focus on a couple of standard scenarios, and that doesn't mean we will get rid of all the variants, of course, but we will have a bigger foundation, a standard foundation, to make sure that we can give you something easy at hand. Right? And I believe that will be a big turnaround in HPC, getting rid of a lot of overhead everyone has with every HPC system to do. This is something where we have around 60 feature areas or so, building blocks, yeah, it's a total of 300 packages you can download, uh, pre-built for Suzlings Enterprise Server. Um, and just in case, openhpc.community is a valid URL, yeah, Dot community is a top level domain. Uh, it's a little bit long for top level domain, but it is real, so just click on it and it's working. Just in case, because we heard it by Intel today, that what is it a great story? It's not an Intel play, just to make this clear. Yeah? If you look on the left side, on the hardware partners or so, there are others, non Intel uh, partners as well, included in this. We have many customers, uh, organizations already part of it. So it's really something where I already quickly after the beginning, we have seen a big community starting. And at the moment, the community is, is working to make sure that all of this works together. But I believe that is a real good and great start for such a project to make it happen. I talked about the Intel thing just in a nutshell. The goal of the Intel HPC orchestrator is to give you a one order, one stack, fully supported. And Intel asked us to provide our help, our support to them. And for that reason, it is built, the HPC orchestrator, based on Suzlings Enterprise Server. And the reason is pretty easy. The goal of it is getting something put it on the system, make sure it works, and in case something happens, you have people who can help you and give, give you the right support level. That is a real enterprise thingy to make stuff happen. And as said, yeah, even in science area, yeah, you need your HPC cluster working on the point of time you have a project running on it. Right? It's not these days that you own your own cluster, right? So usually it's more you have this big cluster to operate and then give away chunks of time to some science projects or so, and they want to get their time when they are listed in, in the timeline, yeah? Microsoft, yeah, so Microsoft is well known for, for uh, a non-Linux operating system, of course, and we know that close to 90 or 99%, whatever it is, on HPC runs Linux. So how is it connected? Pretty easy. Microsoft, meanwhile, offers Linux in the cloud. That is a Microsoft Azure. And Microsoft not only offers a plain Linux, but they also offers SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for HPC, which gives you RDMA access, InfiniBand or so, which means you can run a Linux cluster at Microsoft with a total target on HPC. Might sound crazy, but it's working. So that is, for some people, this is a good pragmatical approach. And it is an interesting play for customers who need a smaller cluster to deploy, departmental clusters, for example, or so, or many commercial customers, because if you don't know yet what is the right size of, your, of a cluster for a project or so, or you don't have the, the room for just adding 400 boxes to your data center, yeah, that is a couple, 10 racks or so, it's not that easy for many customers, so just go to cloud, yeah, pretty easy. Of course, that is a, what every salespeople tells you, 
Yeah, it has its challenges, but for many customers, it's a way to get rid of the challenges of the specific customer, which is usually something like uh, floor ground, energy consumption, and all of this stuff, right? Okay, now I hand over to, to Eckbert for the technical update. And to make him, you hear him, I have to make a technical update to the microphone. Now you are. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Kai. Uh, you, Kai. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> need to do a little dance here. So thank you very much, Kai. Um, you've introduced me already. My name is Egbert Eich, um, and I'm uh, the TPM for HPC at SUSE. So let's take a look. So HPC on SUSE, what, what do we actually offer for, for HPC? Um, what is new? in SLI 12 uh, SP2. Um, you've probably all been to Michael's keynote speech and have heard about the Ceph file system. This is something very interesting for some HPC customers. This is a co component that you um, have available now. Um, then we are partnering with Intel and um, Celeste 12 SP2 is it actually SP2? Um, it's part of the HPC orchestrator. Then you've just heard from Kai, we are part, um, we are, you can run SUSE Linux um, in the Microsoft Cloud and SUSE Linux uh, 12 for HPC. Um, then some recent things, um, we're talking, we're partnering with ARM on ARM64 um, and um, working with um, Cavium um, and Applied Micro. Um, this is also a very interesting platform for HPC come, uh, in the future. So now let's go to the SUSE HPC stack, what, what we all offer, what we offer for HPC. So based on the SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, we've got a number of components inside the kernel and the storage area and the network area and the um, message passing interface area um, that, we are either, that we either support natively um, on SLE 12 SP2 or is supported um, by SUSE partners and integrates seamlessly into the SUSE product. Above this, there are more components um, on the, in the user space stack um, for, for queuing management um, and things also support, supporting for HPC. And then um, we have those features in the kernel. Um, I don't want to go into the details. So if you want to get the slides later on, please contact Kai or me um, that um, support HPC like in the I.O. processing and the scheduling area, performance management, and um, high-speed data transport where we also partner with companies like Intel. Um, um, And then there is the new thing that we are doing. All of this, all, most of this we've talked about until now uh, were kernel features. Now we are doing, we're with SLE 12 SP2, we are presenting, we're providing an HPC user stack um, so that we've heard before that building up this user stack is a lot of effort and if you do this, um, if you're a research institution like Los Alamos, for instance, you have your staff doing this. If you're a, uh, if you're a company, you have to, it costs real money to build up the stack. And we will address this for you and take care of uh, building a user space stack, uh, providing a user space stack ready for install and 
seamlessly integrated in, into the SLIS environment. Um, this user space stack will be based on OpenHPC 1.2, which um, is not released yet. I, I expect it to be announced next week on supercomputing. So um, the software components that we provide, the versions will be the ones uh, from OpenHPC 1.2. Um, so, it will, yeah, we will, it will include packages like HWLock to identify your hardware top topology. Um, you have the RAS daemon um, to check for, for hardware errors, mem memory errors, memkind um, to deal with your um, different memory types, um, volatile, non-volatile memory, and CPU ID um, to identify the, the CPUs on your system. Um, and you will also get many other HPC relevant components for, um, for night's landing, for um, the MPI implementations, two MP MPI implementations um, um, updated to the latest versions. So let's take a look at the HPC module. What will be the components that we will initially provide to you? We, um, as I already mentioned, we base our, our software stack selection on what OpenHPC provides. Um, we will, of course, with the initial release, not su supply the whole stack of OpenHPC, but we've picked some components um, that are good to start with. So what we will have, we will have, the, we will have a workload manager, Slurm. Um, we will have remote shells, uh, the, remote, the remote shell, MR shell, based on the Munch authentication. Um, used in, uh, to, in cluster environments. We have a parallel shell. Um, we have um, a modules system. Usually in an HPC uh, environment, you want to support many different versions of the same library, and you want to have the same um, library compiled, maybe compiled with different compilers or compiled for different versions um, of, MPI, of MPI. And you can, with, with this system, you can have it all in parallel installed on the system so one group can use their version of their library with their choice of MPI implementation and another group can use uh, another version. And we also want to support in, on our system so that you can install um, new versions of the library in parallel to the old versions. This in, then you will not, when you install an, a new version, you will not interfere with groups that still use the old, the old version and want to stay with it. Um, above, uh, then we will provide um, Conman, a serial console manager, Powerman, a centralized power control, um, for the cluster, and uh, question? Why uh, was uh, Slurm user uh, selected, or, or the heavy open tri triad uh, HD Condor for our workload management? Why did you decide to use Slurm? Well, Slurm is part of the open HPC stack. Um, and um, we want to be, we want to stay comp compatible with the OpenHPC stack. Now, the OpenHP, uh, OpenHPC in the in the 1.2 version has also added PSB Pro, and we will be looking into integrating this at a later point of time. Uh, but for the initial release, we went with Slurm. So there are other workload managers, and if you have suggestions there or have certain needs or desires, please contact us. We can talk about this. But we had to make a choice, and we decided to go with what OpenHPC offers, because if we, um, because 
then we can stay compatible with them. Okay. okay. So, uh, just in case, what we are talking about is a stack, right? And you might think about some of these boxes you could exchange by something else, right? But for us, if you think about workload manager, we can't do every workload manager, right? So we have to do one right. That is the most important piece because that is what customers ex expect. As not every customer is equal, yeah, and or other way around, every customer is different, and even inside customers you have different uh, aspects, you might decide to exchange one module by the other. That is totally okay for us, yeah. If you feel there's a different need because a different workload manager, for example, can fulfill other aspects, yeah, what Slurm might not be able to do, please let us know about it because such decisions we also do based on customer feedback or customer demand, on partner demand, and finally then we do decision. Yeah, but that is many inputs and I would welcome your input then if you feel we should something different in this area. And that, of course, applies to every what we do, right? I need your input, we need your input because that is the only way we can adjust to, to your needs. Unfortunately, as I said, uh, if everyone has a different need yeah, or requests a different package, at some point we have to merge these needs and say, okay, that is a way we can do because what you don't want is getting everything but not in the quality you want, right? Yeah, there's another question right there. Okay, okay, sorry. <clears throat> Will you be able to implement an HPC cluster accepting defaults just using the HPC module? That is something, at the moment, the HPC module provides you the tools to create this cluster, but it's not something to deploy the cluster on its own. That is something we see uh, on our roadmap for the future, but for the moment, uh, that is something the HPC orchestrator, for example, addresses to give you a turnkey ready solution for deployment. Okay. Yeah? And we would approach Intel for the HPC orchestrator component, or we would get that through No. So um, the question is uh, how it works with the HPC orchestrator and, and where to get it. Of course, that is an Intel offering, uh, and you have to go to Intel. We at SUSE will be happy to help you with this and connect you if needed. And that was my second question is, if we get the stack from Intel, will SUSE support us? So, SUSE is part of this, and as you heard today, the Intel Orchestrator, HPC Orchestrator, includes SUSE Links Enterprise Server, and that part is, of course, supported by SUSE, because that is the base idea of an enterprise OS. But the, the, the support chain, however, is you contact Intel, and uh, they will analyze the problem and pass it on to SUSE. Okay, another there's, question. There's you, can't, you can't get slaves for HPC directly from SUSE, then you have to you, get uh, you can get so. You can get SLES from SUSE, and you will get the, um, uh, the HPC module on top. It's part of SLES. Um, so when you have a SLES su subscription, you will get the HPC module on top, but it's this is different from the uh, from the HPC orchestrator that Intel offers. Just some feedback um, straight away. The extension of that support model right now will probably be an inconvenience for customers. Because sometimes when the cluster is having issues, having having to wait on inter vendor inter vendor support can be a problem. This, yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Is, you're, this you're is you're absolutely yeah. right. So the the. Uh, the concern is about how support is working, but we have proved in the data center that we make this working very well with customers and with partners. So we have these processes in place to give you the right answer. And of course, keep in mind, we are not talking about a small company or so as a partner, but one of the biggest chip manufacturers which, uh, with specific to uh, HPC they have a focus to make it enterprise, okay? So we work on this, and uh, just in case, as I said, we are talking about different things. You can get SUSE Linux Enterprise for HPC direct at SUSE, and then it is directly supported by SUSE, okay? Yeah. The HPC orchestrator on top gives you a complete HPC stack. 
okay, that is much more, yeah? So if you want this much more, of course, then you have a different support model. Keep in mind to compare this, what you have today. If you want a complete stack with, a, let's say, 50, 60 different projects, might be 20 vendors to deliver, that is a nightmare for support, okay? So we can't get it down to one, but we just swing it down to two. I think that is not bad. It's not bad. Think so. Right. Okay. Right. So move on. And with the HPC module, just to make this clear, with, for the HPC module that is provided by SUSE, you will get the support by SUSE, so everything is in one hand. Okay, okay then um, beyond this, um, in the initial release of the HPC module, we will provide um, file format library, the HD. Um, HDF5 file format library, um, both the serial version and also and the, and the MPI version. Um, we will supply NetCDF um, and the C++ and the Fortran flavor of it. Um, we will initially ship the um, OpenBLAST library, NumPy, um, ScalarPack, and FFTW, which is actually already part of um, SLS 12 SP2. Um, then we also will include perf the performance tools, um, PAPI, uh, the performance, monitor monitoring, uh, performance, monitor performance monitoring interface, and MPIP, a lightweight profiling library for MPI. Okay. okay. Now I pass back to Kai for the outlook. Dance again, please. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's much better just to say, I think, uh, two years ago, there was a stage with some steps, small steps. So that was not that pleasant. But no one breaks his legs. So, okay. So let's have some outlook. The title of today's session is Keeping Pace. And in this way, I would say Outlook is starting the way, right? So we have already done a lot of work for HPC in the past, so we already can look backwards and see great success, right? On the other side, we see HPC with a single stack, unified stack, just starting, right? So that is a cool thing for me as a product manager yeah, to see something is already going on and now popping up tremendously yeah, to new frontiers. And I'm looking forward, and special to the supercomputing next week, yeah, where we are really able to focus just a complete conference on, on HPC and supercomputing. And I believe we will see much more going on in the commercial area than in the past. Just to give you a couple of thoughts about where we believe this will move. First of all, I personally really believe in the idea of open HPC because it is a base idea of community, of open source community to work together instead of everyone does his own thing, right? And that will really bring us forward, yeah? Give us better technology, better packaging, less errors, less bugs, and something like that. So I really believe in this, yeah? Uh, that is nothing which will happen from today to tomorrow, right? There will be a lot of challenges in it, yeah? What is the best way to do something? Yeah, we have touched this today as well. But I believe we will see more and more contributions to this, more and more people joining, and I already see real big customers have joined it. It's not just a vendor thing where a couple of companies sit together and say, oh, that would be cool to make more money. No, it's a community thing, telling the community, let's do it better for the benefit of all. And that is good because we have learned about HVC in practice that it helps our daily life, right? And people helping me in daily life always get a benefit from me, yeah? So that's really good. Getting a more common stack will allow us to grow 
the partner ecosystem will allow us to address ISVs to tell them, hey, look at this, your application could run in an HPC cluster and you can get a better return time for your customers. Today the answer is, yeah, but what MPI do we, should we do? What is optimization or something like that? They just step back and say, no, that's some, nothing we can do because it would give us too many options to, to deal with. Yeah? If we can get this down to a couple of standard options for, let's say, commercial use, then it will really help. And think about it, it will free up resources in the industry to do more research, right? Today, a lot of resources are bound just to manage this stuff, and I can't believe any scientific guy likes to manage a cluster. Yeah, usually not. They like to do research, right? So that is a mismatch today. So I believe that will move away. We will see hybrid cloud or complete cloud deployments getting in. Yeah. So uh, some of us who are running clusters. Oh, I'm getting some feedback there. I've not changed any, right? So, uh, so we will see cloud really popping up in this area. And simply, not so much for the top sites, because, hey, if you think about 50,000 nodes or so, that's a big project. You might not want to have this in the cloud. But we will see this in smaller departmental clusters, even at universities, where they say, oh, let's do for a project, just run it in the cloud. Yeah? And that is a great opportunity and I think that will show where for what the cloud originally was intent to give you an agile, flexible, uh, on-demand property instead of just moving a box instead from the data center to somewhere on an island or so. Have I said that I don't like cloud that much personally but it will happen there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You will see pretty soon this HPC module popping up in the SUSE Linux Enterprise channels. So you know in the downloads area or so. We are working to make this ready. Uh, that is part of the new SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 12 SP2 release, just released. Yeah, and as you know, this is never a stopping thing, so we are always working on this. Again, I want to ask you, look at this. Give us feedback. If you say, oh, that is something you should consider to take into this or so, then let's make it happen, right? The goal is uh, not finally to do the work of a scientific engineer, of course, but the goal is to make it easier for them just to use the HPC for what they, need, what they call research, okay? And finally, this is part of a uh, part of module, part of SP2. I think that coming soon I could already strike because the launch for, for SP2 was yesterday. So, um, but the slides, of course, were prepared a, a few days before, <laughs> is the Intel OmniPass architecture. You know that is a high-speed communication uh, which is similar to InfiniBand, but totally different at the same time. Yeah, let's keep it this way. Um, the benefit will be complete integration on the ship. That means instead of having PCIe cards or so for it, it will be just part of the ship set, which gives you a real cool, low latency, high speed bandwidth you can't get with the PCIe buses or something like this today. Yeah? Uh, I really wonder how this in the future looks like, yeah? because you can't plug a cable into the CPU, right? You still need to route the cable somewhere or so, yeah. uh, of course. That said, I'm done. We have a couple of minutes, I think, five minutes still for question and answer. Yes, if we can't answer your question yet, feel free to approach us. We are around, we are in the technology showcase. Yeah, we have a booth there to talk about details or just send us an email. Yeah, download the app, email address is on the front page. Send us an email and we gi will give you an answer. And there was a question. So, the It will be available soon. So it's just in a matter of, uh, of two or three weeks. Yeah. Uh, you should be able to um, get it through the channels. So, right, okay. All right. So that was a final question. Uh, just just one, one thing to take home about the HPC module. This is all brand new. This is not the end of the line. We are going to add more components to this. 
And if you have any suggestions or any needs, uh, please approach us um, and talk to us. We will see what we can do.